Okay, so week two in CIT 93, uh, client side, really JavaScript. So in week one, um, and this is actually being recorded on a Saturday that ends week one, starting into week two, I normally try to do attendance um, recording. I think I may have said this wrong in the first one, so and not it's not a big deal for you. It's really about time management for me, but I typically try to do it on the week before that, that coming week, so I normally try to do it on Friday. But in this case, my Friday was crazy this week. Just so many things that hit my schedule, which I suspect some of you may feel <laughs> as well in your weeks, right? It's just things just come up. So hopefully you're just already getting used to the PACES class. And some of you I know are actually enrolled in my CIT 82, which is a nine week course. And that, that course content is flowing much quicker. We're, like I said to them today, they're actually getting into week three. You are just starting into week two. And so this pace is different, but this pace, this week we definitely kick up the pace with running our first code up section uh, in the course, uh, in the uh, boot camp Modern JavaScript with Andrew Mead. And I've already seen a couple of you post that you really like Andrew's style, and I do too. I think it's a really, um, like I said, the best uh, JavaScript course I've found to date uh, to teach modern JavaScript because JavaScript has changed so much. Um, by the way, I'm actually co-teaching Java this semester, and the more I learn Java, the more I see uh, similarities between Java and JavaScript. I used to think they were very different, partly because I had never done any Java, but now that I'm doing some, I'm like, oh yeah, that's very similar. So, you know, once you learn one language, your second language should be easier. So in this week, um, I just want to say a word about, and some of you have already submitted, you know, this Learn Together where you're posting your images uh, and your print screens uh, in this week. And in the video, and I gave you the heads up here that the way I had grabbed the URL was I did it in Firefox. But I want to actually show you um, doing it in Chrome. And I was playing around with this this morning, and there's actually two ways to do it. Both seem to work. Um, so I'll just show you that. So in the reply, when you're setting it up, the way I showed you is actually embedding the image, but just get used to because you're going to learn this and this is part of why you're here, is actually writing the code. So this is an image tag. It's got a source attribute, which is where you copy the URL, and then you have an alt tag. So when you're using this embed image, you're basically just bypassing writing the code. Oh my mistake here too. I actually, I'm going to cut this. I need to be in the HTML editor when I do this. Um, the other way is what we call WYSIWYG and it's fine to get started, but over time you're going to learn how to do it this way. Okay. So getting back to this image idea, and by the way, you can look up any tag you want to know uh, in MDN. MDN is the best reference for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, bar none. Um, you'll see W3School, but I don't recommend it anymore. Uh, learn, the sooner you learn to read MDN, the better. And so if you want to know what those that uh, what, what we call a signature to the signature of the tag is the our element itself uh, and then the attributes that are uh, this one's required uh, this one I wouldn't even consider this one optional just for accessibility reasons okay so going back to here so I brought up in my image directory in my public repo and I've I saw two ways to do this now that I have it I can right click and copy image and then I can come over here and I can paste that and I and if it rendered correctly right I should be able to actually pop back to the HTML and it comes in okay so that's one way um, seems to work fine the other way you can do this is like this is you actually click on the image sorry let's go in here oh sorry right click on the image open in a new tab and when you do that when you right click um, or actually you can look up here this actually gives you what's called the raw.git user content um, I'm sure a little more research would be needed by me just to, to say the difference but it's basically the same thing referenced um, differently. So in here, if I was to do that same thing now, I'll do it the way I showed you just for expedient, right? 
So here's the idea. This obviously gives you a few more attributes, right? And this would be your, right, uh, accessibility, right? And this actually references the image size, which is something, you know, you'll learn as you learn HTML is that um, when it's needed and when it's not. Many times lately we've seen people leave it off unless they want to constrain it for some reason. Uh, but I'll just show you that, right? So that's the other way of doing it. They both seem to turn out fine, uh, but you can do it either way. But please do, and if I s please do use when I ask for print screens or other things, use that uh, GitHub images directory, and we'll use this a several times through the semester. Okay. All right. So um, I'm not going to save mine just because I had already posted one earlier. So let's look just uh, briefly here because uh, I think it's worth noting. As like I said before, here's our first major section in this um, in this course that we're doing. And um, oh, I actually did have run into a little issue when I was recording this video. So just see that I figured out what that was. So in this case, and I say this, but it's worth repeating here, is that when you do this section, section three, right, it's going to be 11 videos, so it does going to take some time to work through. It's why you only have this one item due next Thursday, is I want you to do git commits and git, uh, and you don't have to do a git push till the end, but git commits after each section. Now the first section is no code, so no big deal there. But when I look at your uh, GitHub repo, uh, I want to see uh, commits uh, starting after 10 all the way through uh, 9. And this is uh, one of those fundamental sections uh, learning uh, the base JavaScript uh, or just, again, many programming languages have, all, all programming languages have these similar concepts of strings and numbers uh, and variables, um, booleans and comparisons and ifs and advanced ifs and logical ors. It's just how they implement them may be a little different. Okay, but I want to say, and, and I just want to clarify this too, this is at the end of this week, you needed to have made sure you have your local um, your repos cloned to your local system, uh, which means you have to have installed GitHub. And again, I've talked about several times now that uh, where he installs Commander, you don't have to unless you want to, but you can use Git Bash if you're on Windows. On Mac, Terminal works fine, but, uh, and I do recommend, especially for the first part of this course, doing manual uh, where you do Git ads. Um, to add them to your repo and then get commits and then get pushes to do those commands manually. Okay. But at the end of this week, you need to have figured that out and, and, and not using the web interface to put code up on GitHub. Okay, so make sure that you've done that because the further we go into this course, the more of a challenge it will be to convert uh, you over. And not only that, it's just part of what you need to learn. Uh, it's just part of a core, the core competency, the core skill base, all web developers, and even folks that are just kind of interested and maybe having a different path, but everyone who's close and around this industry needs to have GitHub. Um, now GitHub is the website, Git is the local version, needs to have uh, that skill base. Okay, so make sure you're reaching out to me if for some reason you need some more help. Uh, and I am, you know, I talked about my schedule in week one, but I'll just tell you that one thing that happened is I am holding a, a Java lab. John, Brian and I are holding one 10 to 11.05 on Fridays in BE 123. But um, then my office hour immediately follows that. Uh, so that is a little bit different. And I say that because when you get to this learn together, we talk about our first uh, development project here and my time availability. Okay. So, but really the other thing about that is come get help if you need it. You know, this is, you're taking a coding class remotely and uh, the real, um, sometimes what you need to do is come talk to somebody. It will save you a lot of time by just coming down and setting with somebody, uh, especially on this GitHub stuff. Sometimes instructors and I have talked about this are like, I don't throw GitHub the first week because I don't want to create more of a challenge. And I'm like, I hear that, but we really need it from Git week one, which is why I find it so important. 
Anyway, enough from me. I've seen the several of you on the Hangout, which is awesome. Uh, and the Hangout seems to be, uh, well, let's see. Let me go look how many are on there. 15, almost the same number. Uh, and people already got it, got conversations going on about typing stuff, which is totally awesome, right? Um, so, you know, that's a great place. You will see me post, like today when I finish attendance, I'll post something in there showing that I have placed that attendance available. So you'll have until noon, like you did this week. So noon of next week to do attendance. You only have to do it once. Uh, and again, uh, I take it as a signal to see how well you're doing in this class, but please come get help if you need it. And if my hours don't work for you, reach out and let me know when. If I can't be on campus, then we can do a virtual uh, virtual connection because there are many technologies, as I've already talked about, that can do that. Whew. Okay, happy Saturday, everyone. Enjoy your week.